but let, let's let's uh, delve into some details. You know, uh, listeners to this program are just seeing this combination now FDA approved, and and you know can look at the clinical trial data, but I think have uh, maybe a difficult time understanding what should be their goals in terms of the so-called induction period. You know, for combination doses. You know, we talked about some of the toxicities being. Uh, some more intimidating, some less intimidating in terms of the, the features of them. But, uh, you know, Renee's point, I think, is a good one. We, we don't know that four induction doses is absolutely necessary. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering what your thoughts are, Jason, in terms of practice. Um, you know, if you have a patient in front of you who appears to be manifesting toxicity, um, you know, through the second dose, maybe the third dose, um, you know, how, how much motivation do you have to try to get to a fourth combination dose? Um, assuming you don't hit a wall of, you know, clear steroid requiring autoimmunity. Um, you know, in other words, do you let the patient's toxicity cool off a bit, maybe delay if you have to, to get that fourth dose in? Or are you comfortable saying, I think we've pushed hard enough, far enough, I'm going to go to the, the PD-1, you know, maintenance phase mm -hmm. uh, in this patient? Um, I, so I guess the former. I'm comfortable when we start to push the envelope that we don't need to keep going. Yeah. I think there's big data series that suggest that patients who start to develop uh, immune-related adverse events should be managed aggressively with um, immunosuppression, with steroids, and that their long-term outcomes are the same. The, there's a slight nuance to what you said, which is you didn't actually have to treat them with steroids. Yeah. It gets a little bit yeah. hairy then, right? So, right. But certainly anyone who has toxicity that requires steroids, right. that's enough. Yep. Now, whether or not to keep giving them PD-1 thereafter, I think is an interesting question that we, his trial he talked about will give us some information about that, but yet we don't know so far. But yeah. certainly, uh, definitely the, the, the message has to be treat the symptoms aggressively yeah. with immunosuppression. And thereafter, I'm not, when people have adverse events that require steroids, I'm not excited about giving them more ipilimumab. Sure. Whether or not they might get more anti-PD-1 antibody, maybe. It sort of depends on the clinical scenario, but I'm not so much trying to push forward. And I think the data actually from the phase three trial support this actually. So yeah. most of the responses happen very quickly. Most of the side effects happen very quickly. Right. And if you actually look at these uh, swimmers plots, the patients, a lot of them came off very early from treatment and yet they're ongoing in response far later. So I don't think that we need to push all these doses. Yeah. If I think it's a sort of a biological pharmacodynamic marker right. that if the patient is manifesting immune uh, you know, adverse events, then you may have broken tolerance and you're gonna get clinical benefit out over a long period of time. But I think we'll only know that for several years from now. Yeah, well, in the 069 trial, two-thirds of the patients who had dose-limiting side effects and had to stop maintained their remission. So it wasn't all of them. And I, uh, I think that you can get away with giving nivolumab to a patient who's had ipilimumab and had ipi-related side effects. And I think I've shown sufficiently in a small study that you can give nevo to a patient who's had an IPI-related toxicity safely. And in the 064 trial, if you were an RMB where you got IPI first and you had a mm -hmm. dose-limiting toxicity, you could still get it re to resolve and move on to your NEVO doses with a small delay. And generally, the patients did well. So I think you could have combo toxicity, much of which may well be the IPI, stop, recover, and then go to the NEVO maintenance. I bet you could do that safely. And I think one, I perhaps would do that in uh, common practice, mm -hmm. in fact, if mm -hmm. I were giving off-protocol combination therapy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would agree with, with that and with what Jason said also. I, I don't see the need to push the IPI to, to the limit. And, and it is a cumulative toxicity. Right. So the more you do it, the more likely you are, and there may then you, you get delayed side effects. One thing, I just, just to clarify so that people don't do this all the time, uh, so we treat the autoimmune events with steroids, generally. Um, the endocrine events often need steroid replacement doses or, or, or initially just, just to get, get it under control, but then the patients come down and are left on a dose of 10 or less. And, and those patients could potentially get more doses. That's not a, uh, necessarily a limiting toxicity. The endocrine effect. The, the endocrine effect. And, and just while we're on that, maybe just bring it up too. Infliximab is a great drug mm -hmm. for this diarrhea. Um, it works very quickly. Most patients, it just takes one dose, and you can probably avoid long time, you know, six weeks or more mm. of high dose steroids, mm. which which might be easier. Sure. No, I I agree with Renee, and actually, just to to quickly touch on that, very briefly, there will be a trial coming up that I helped to write. That's going to be a small randomized phase two of infliximab up front, just like mm -hmm. you said. Finally with short course of 18 days of prednisone or orally, 
versus methylprednisolone at one to two mg per kilogram for a day or two, followed by a 30 to 40 day taper. Right. So the idea here is to look at duration of diarrhea, duration of symptoms, and the need to go back to high dose steroids in the infliximab group, which would be a failure. Right. And I think it's going to be a very interesting trial. It's open to anyone, ipi, nevo, combo, lung cancer, melanoma, renal, et cetera. So I, I think that's going to be a very good study. And I think it'll show that infliximab, just like Renee assumes, works really well. Well, I think let's, let's close out this session with just maybe one forward-looking comment, Jason. The, um, you know, all of this discussion of toxicity, I think, is one of the major motivators as to why doctors and patients right now are really enthusiastic about a lot of the PD-1 plus XYZ ABC combination trials. Mm -hmm. um, what's on your short list in terms of, you know, emerging results with those types of combinations uh, you know, that, that, that uh, you know, viewers of this program might want to keep an eye out, you know, looking into next year's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, scientific symposia. So one we touched on already were the com combination with TVAC, so injectable virolytics uh, to amplify the immune response is one, and we, I don't have to go back to that. But the other one that we're very, very interested in is a combination with anti-PD-1 antibody with inhibitors of a molecule called endolamine dioxygenase, mm. IDO, which is another molecule that's in the tumor microenvironment and, interestingly, regulates tryptophan metabolism. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that T cells are very exquisitely mm -hmm. dependent on just the right amount of tryptophan. So insert your Thanksgiving joke here now. <laughs> um, but uh, that combination in early data presented looks very powerful. Now, we'll have to see how robust that is as more patients are treated. But the toxicity profile for that combination is almost the same as anti-PD-1 antibody alone. And so if we can get anywhere near the kind of benefit we get with ipi nevo combo with no increase in toxicity, that would be very exciting. And then certainly there are a lot of other immune checkpoints that are interesting, and I won't read the long list, mm. but Ox40, you know, um, uh, Gitter, and all these other ones that are going to come down the pipeline, and we don't know how good those might be also. Yeah, so I think we'll close this section by saying, you know, clearly PD-1 antibody-based therapy uh, is established. We have the first combination that clearly shows at least an additive, if not more than additive effect. Um, but we, we may be able to really proliferate uh, these types of regimens and be interesting to see if we can really widen the therapeutic index in years to come.